I'm excited that, that, that you've stayed within uh, the politics uh, uh, in that particular state and trying to bring some form of uh, meaning or analysis to all that is happening. Uh, let's go to someone now on phone. Uh, he joins us from Abuja, Emmanuel Bello. He's a former commissioner of information in Taraba State, uh, at least. Uh, he's uh, from the state to tell mm. us uh, what he thinks about uh, this uh, development. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning, Clement. <laughs> well, uh, now the news is back and uh, they talk about uh, the well-being and health issue of uh, the governor of Taraba State uh, is making uh, the front pages. Uh, what's your take on this? Well, uh, let me start by thank you people for, you know, um, doing a very good job of, of trying to do some balancing because uh, I've seen stations where they just invited, you know, some people and then they talk about Taraba. Uh, these people are not from Taraba. Um, they are commentators from outside. And if you're not from Taraba, it's simple sense, you know. It's difficult to understand the, 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 the you know, the containing uh, issues in, in, the, in, in this whole uh, saga. Uh, and I want to also uh, uh, greet my big brother, <laughs> Dr. Kabiru Mato, who, with whom I've, uh, you know, worked together in, uh, when we were in our days in our leadership and some other places. Um, I, I listened to him once uh, at, uh, on, on the AIT, and, and I'm listening to him again today. And there's a gap in his... Uh, in his in of all that is going on, uh, principally because he's, you know, I'm sure he's looking at this thing as an observer, like you say, from the outside. So, but if you're from the inside, you will be. Well, there are many things, there are gray areas, and many things that meet the eye. Um, you know, that does not meet the ordinary eye, but uh, they, are, they are there. So, it's a good thing that, yes, sometimes we talk to people that are from the inside. The governor is back, and um, by the grace of God, it is, you know, it is, it is strange that people can, you know, in some section of the of the constitution and talk about them, but greatly. Um, if you look at Damba, Governor Dambaba, you cannot even by the stretch of imagination say that, you know, uh, they need to subject him to some probe, medical probe, because they want to determine if he's permanently incapacitated. The man who is on the saddle now, the deputy governor of the state, was at the airport to receive Governor Dambaba. And he was there, he's not an incapacitated person, but somebody that is, you know, he could receive. There's no way in the world you could receive someone that is, in, is permanently incapacitated. Now, don't forget that the operational value in that time is permanently incapacitated. So when this cycles, this whole charade of, or, you know, of, uh, of, of a probe that is being set up, you know, somebody from the outside might think that, oh, well, yeah, you know, they are following the constitution, that's what the constitution says. You have to understand that Taraba is steeped in illegality. And this is, not, this is something that a lot of people don't look at, that Taraba right now is an illegal state. Taraba is operating outside the constitution of the Federal Republic. Taraba is the only place that you have got two governors. You have the governor, you have the acting governor. Taraba is the only state where you have two SSGs. There's an SSG that is loyal to Tambaba, and then there's an SSG that is loyal to the deputy governor. It is a strange contraption. Now, I have an issue, even the ESCO that set up the whole, uh, you know, the, the sent a memo and set up the whole pa uh, uh, panel uh, that won, uh, to uh, send the memo to the speaker, not to set up. That ESCO itself is illegal because there's, there's, there are actually court rulings on this matter. But because of the illegality, because of the strangeness of our state and the strangeness of our situation, people don't look at this thing. It is so, it's so, it's so strange that forever today, is the only state, and those of you who are interested in constitutionalism, those of you who are interested in the rule of law, those of you who are in, interested in uh, justice and distribution of justice, you need to begin to ask questions about what is going on. Mm. Mr. Why Bello, is I, it that? You know, it, it is very interesting that you say some of these things. You say it is steeped in illegality. You have two governors, the, the current governor and the acting governor. Well, a lot of people will ask if, you know, this if the political actors themselves didn't bring it on. That raises a very grave question about the state of health of the governor because a lot of people would imagine that if the governor truly were back to his full form, there are certain things that are happening that shouldn't happen or would not even happen. What do you have to say about that? Now, thank you very much. You see, I've been on this program before and we've talked again back and forth about issues of health, uh, the health of someone. And the question again we continue to ask is like, is that, how 
what how much fat or how healthy enough do you want somebody to be? And and thank God because these are these are not these are not you know personal issues. These are not emotional issues. These are not things that we can just you know think of. The, the constitution is clear about this. When does a man fail to be a governor? The constitution says when the person is permanently incapacitated, not when he has injuries. When he has maybe not when there are clear signs of recovery, not when maybe the person could still you know carry out certain functions of, of a human being. It's when the person is part. Of and again, please, for those who are we're not lawyers, we're lay people. But you see, the emphasis should be on permanent incapacitation. And only doctors can determine if someone is permanently incapacitated. This one for us as laymen. You know what it means to be permanently out. You can't see, you can't talk, you're on a wheelchair, you are, you are, you are, you are, I mean, you are, you are out, down and out. These are things that, you know, even as lay people, we don't have the benefit of reading medicine. We know that this, this, some, someone of that nature is permanently incapacitated. At that point, yes, they does not seem to be a governor. That is what he says. It's nothing to say with, because, I mean, all of us live with, you know, certain levels of, you know, ill health. There are people who look very healthy. You look at them. The current uh, deputy governor of Taraba State is not very healthy. He's actually a 70 year old man that has got his own, uh, you know, health issues. It was, it was in the news recently that he went to seek uh, uh, medical attention. Uh, well, uh, Emmanuel Bello, uh, we'll come back to you. Uh, Dr. Mato, you heard what he said. Well, he's been an insider for almost that period. He was a commissioner for information and he's always been on that. Uh, he's saying, well, for someone who is, uh, well, incapacitated, he's, uh, well, he's speaking from what he can observe. Mm. And he's saying, to the best of his knowledge, the governor is fit. You see, I picked two things from, uh, you know, this, the, the intervention by Emmanuel Bello. As he said, we, we, are really, we are really fairly close. We knew each other very well in the media industry. Uh, but I picked two things from what he said. One is the issue of emphasizing on what's happening in Tarawa is more than what meets the ordinary eye from outside. And some of us that are from outside, therefore, are unable to see and cannot speak on what's happening in Tarawa State. That's one argument by Mr. Bello. The second argument by Mr. Bello is the definition of incapacitation. I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a lawyer, but constitutionality, you know, as far as I'm concerned, when you are incapable is when you are unable to do what you are supposed to do, not total incapacitation. And I did tell you in this program about the Babotindo Oshintimehin issue with the Federal Executive Council about his honest intervention on what total incapacitation means. And of course, there is no doctor that can tell you that an individual is finally and permanently incapacitated because a tragic scenario today could spring up surprise the next moment. So that's, that's noticed even in medicine. But then the <coughs> fact of the matter is that I think the whole issue in Tarawa State, based on my interpretation of the reality there, seem to be that these internal crises that Emmanuel Bello is talking about, and which some of us that are from outside are Nigerians at the same time, are telling them, and any other politician for that matter in this country to be wary of, is emphasizing on the minor fault lines that divides the people. I come from Kaduna State, so I, I'm, I'm in it, I understand what's happening. In Kaduna State, the section where I come from has never produced a governor until Patrick Yakua came about as a result of the ascendancy of Nama Disambo to the vice presidency after the death of President Yaradwa. When Patrick Yakua, a Christian from southern part of the state, became a governor in 2010, I mean, became a governor in 2010, he recontested election in 2011 and he won until he died also in that very fatal air crash. Okay, so you cannot stand in one place and tell me that because you are a Christian, you cannot be a governor in a state where there are Christians and Muslims, or because you are a Muslim, you cannot be a governor in a state where there are Christians and Muslims. And this seems, this seems to be, okay, the very basis of the entire crisis in Tarawa State. I mean, to me as an outsider, this state, because uh, like I said, we suffered from it until recently, before that particular hypothesis was severely dealt with. Kaduna has never had a Christian governor from 1967 when it was created as North Central State until in 2010. So if Taraba has never had a Muslim governor from the time it was created, or at least from 1999 to date, 
It is not sufficient reason for any elite in Tarawa State, for that matter. Since when have Nigerian elites reduced the essence of politics and governance to religious and ethnic divides? Yes, there are factors, whether we like it or not. But so I from, think that from your reading quickly, before we call on uh, Mr. Billy again, yes. from your reading quickly, do you think that uh, while well, there's a, a taint of religion? Yeah, I this? think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so because this is one of the issues on the table. There is a question of power shift. Okay, some people are arguing. I understand that they want power to shift to southern part of the state, and unfortunately, this <coughs> came about. Oh, okay, now look at the good luck Jonathan Yaradua episode. President Jonathan from South South, Yaradua from Northwest, when Yaradua died, he took over. And remember the succession debate and the crisis that lingered in the country until the matter was resolved through the ballot box? So I, I think this, the same crisis that seems to be rearing its ugly head in Tarawa State, and it is the most unfortunate thing, it is the greatest disservice that any elite, because what the people need really is good governance. What the people need is not who or where an individual that is representing them comes from. Harry Kissinger said that the success of any government is measured in terms of its real ability to bring forth new realities. And what are new realities? The realities are everything seems to be backward. And elites should not continue to deceive the citizenry, okay, on minor fault lines and minor divides, but that we should insist on delivery of the common good as the essential condiment of democratic governance. Let's